Willkommen zurück auf dem Welcome back on the Chaos Zone Channel, Chaos Zone TV, at the Remote Chaos Experience. And this is our penultimate talk of the first day, and it's about an, a very urgent issue, and that is climate change. And due to climate change, we, of course, all want to protect the climate, and <coughs> That is something that local authorities have to do with as well and, and local communities. And in order to not let everyone do their own thing or compel them to do their own thing, but help, uh, some people have developed a framework that is the local emission framework climate protection at your door. And that's what they want to introduce. Uh, the talk will also be translated to English. And therefore, you should choose uh, uh, the audio channel too. So, and with that, uh, uh, and, and with that, <coughs> enjoy the talk. And uh, I'll see you again for the questions and answers. Hi, I'm Johannes. And where are you from? I'm from Krefeld. Mülheim, Chemnitz, Oldenburg, Bielefeld. I'm Jan from Dopplusen, Appelhusen. And Jan, are you interested in climate protection? Yes. Oh, yes. Of course. Very important. Yes, very important. Climate protection is very important to me. Do you know what protection measures there are in your city of Krefeld? Locally? Uh, spontaneously? No, I can't think of anything. No, actually, I can't. I don't. I don't really know anything directly, no. Um, um, no. No. I think I think I knew if anything what was happening. I wouldn't know. Hi, I'm Niklas, and as you can see, climate protection at your own door is quite a tricky thing sometimes. And to be honest, uh, about one year ago, I felt very much the same as the people that you've just seen in the video there. I was sitting at home. You can see my the kitchen in my flat chair here, and I was thinking, uh, well, climate protection right here, how does that work? My feeling was that it doesn't work the right way. It goes, it just bleeds, it goes in the wrong direction. And I don't have examples where I would think, no, it's not working so well. And at the same time, I thought, I felt certain activism inside me. Local elections were coming up. And so there was a kind of planlessness and activism. And I was uh, doing what I would then do, talk with my friends. And I realized quickly that maybe I don't simply, simply don't know enough. I don't have the required knowledge to, to get active. And then in that kind of situation, there are two options. One, I just, just go to sleep and forget about the whole thing, or I wake up in the next morning and still think I should do something. And that is what happened. In this case, I still wanted to do something. So I thought, OK, I need more information. What is the situation like? So let's just get an first get an overview of things. How does it work uh, at the local level? Because I am from the city of Münster in, in Western Germany. North Rhine Westphalia, I went to our city's website and uh, I then found this uh, thing our climate 2030 master plan 100% climate protection that sounded very good. And there was this uh, uh, logo that they used, and there was this seal as well from the National Climate Protection Initiative. And I thought, okay, this looks good. Maybe I do really not have to worry. You have the ministry, the federal ministry behind it, supporting this top. And if I want more information, then you would then go and uh, click on those links. For example, that's the master plan, a PDF. Uh, sadly, not not accessible a PDF full of information. And uh, I think that is where most people would exit the whole uh, thinking. But not, I am not me. I'm a teacher's child. Uh, that's, that's where I actually start to get going. So I downloaded the thing. I actually downloaded it several times. Uh, sadly, they don't have a click counter. I don't know how many of the overall downloads were down to me. So I downloaded this and read it all. And this is how it looks. Uh, 
as a first impression data table of contents. Those 29 megabytes are translated into 190 pages of compressed information. And what I saw from reading it for the first time, I realized that the header says 2050. So it used to say, it, it did say 2030 on the website and suddenly a shift to 2050. So you smell the conspiracy suddenly. Maybe things aren't as good as they seemed at first, but there is a reason. Münster actually did, uh, resolved uh, a uh, catalog of measures and targets for 2050, and that was then further sharpened by another town council resolution saying that the targets were set for 2050, uh, we want to reach by 2030. But that document wasn't updated, apparently that's how it goes. And if you look further into that master plan, you are overwhelmed by things like this wonderful these targets here. So the uh, energy consumption is to be reduced by 50% uh, carbon house, uh, <coughs> um, sorry, greenhouse gases by 95%. It all reads very well, it fits the Paris uh, Court goals. And uh, I read the whole thing, I was kind of reassured and there is more information to find such as this wonderful diagram here, which ad administrative government offices love. There's a virtual power station here, power plant of the city of Münster. So it's all been thought through. I'm sure it has had scientific uh, accompaniment as well. And there is a lot of thinking, as you can notice, and that I, was that I found very interesting. And what I found particularly interesting is that at the end of the whole master plan, and I think this master plan is a good example for many cities' measures that they have designed and and at the end, you normally find a list of measures. Here is an example measure. So climate neutral administration, the town as a role model, and it's described as a very nice project. You have a description of stakeholders, you have a budget, you have all various maps and these, these, these cards for all the various measures that what you get. And now we've reached page 151 of this whole PDF. And I found that because I was searching for it, uh, and uh, most people probably won't get that far. Uh, that's not to say, uh, I'm not using this as a rant against the city of Münster. It's great that they came up with such a plan and put it up into as a PDF to download. I found partners I could contact immediately and people that deal with the issue exclusively. But most people probably don't know. I've been living in the city for a long time. I think I can say I've been interested in this for a long while, but I never knew that this existed. And if I had, if I hadn't searched for it directly, I would never have known about it. And you could say, okay, that's how it goes with uh, town, uh, cities, administrations in Germany. It's that's not a scandal. It's the slow way they work. And I would say that the problem in this case is that sadly we don't have that much time. Targets are good and, and well, but you have to start implementing them at some point and because there is a huge social transformation that this entails uh, you really have to get, carry everyone along so all citizens should be informed and if you don't do that you run the risk of uh, this something like this happening we have a group here in uh, the neighboring uh, place Ludinghausen which protested against the wind power monsters, as they called it. And if you have a, such a problem like that, uh, I think a protest isn't that bad, but often uh, there is a wave of legal action coming after it as well. And that leads to the whole action plan being implemented much later or not at all. And that is a huge problem if you have a lot of time pressure. Uh, also, to put it in a positive sense, if I can manage to get all the citizens to follow along, then 
then I might actually have more support from civil society, it's kind of support that I had not expected in the first place. And maybe that would help us to reach the goals better or earlier. And there are examples for that too. For example, there was a climate training that the city of Münster uh, put on and a journalist from the local paper heard about it and reported about it and uh, put an article into his paper and he reached a lot of readers that way. And that uh, had a multiplication effect and uh, yeah, that is wonderful. Um, so to summarize, you would want uh, a communication platform that works between the municipalities and the citizens and uh, we want an effective and highly informative program uh, that reaches a civil society that is interested and is in favor of change but doesn't really know what the town is planning. So to summarize, I'd like, you would like a standardized open framework for digital communication of climate protection targets and measures, which should be updated as it goes along. So that's, these are the thoughts that I had. And I then naively put those to paper and uh, sent it to the prototype fund and asked whether perhaps we could build something like that. And they said, okay. And uh, what has come of that one year and two months later is what I'm going to show you now. Right, the uh, solution we found to this problem is called the Local Emission Framework. And uh, what we found important here is that these two sides that Nicholas talked about, the interested citizens on the one and the towns and communes and administrations on the other side, should be connected through a portal that is as simple as possible. And let's look at it from the point of view of the interested citizen first. So if I want to find out about my city, um, I can search for it on this map. I can also search for it in this search entry. And uh, the idea in the way this is presented is uh, that it is ordered according to main questions. The first question here, what targets has my city, Leipzig in this case, set itself? And there is a nice timeline that you can use to find out about these targets. Uh, 2030, maybe 2050, whatever, whatever targets they set. And that is augmented by the actual information and the time that the actual decision was made and whether it's been implemented, whether it's been updated and things like that. And even more importantly, you have the measures, the individual steps and as uh, probably became clear already, a very long plan is very hard. It's very hard to get all the information from such a long document. But here you can quite easily dis to display it uh, and you can think for yourself uh, whether the targets and the measures to implement those targets actually match and are they enough to reach that target or do I think that more should happen from my city or from my municipality. Neben dieser Leitfrage oder diesem Widget gibt es noch weitere. Um, hier sind einige, die um, direkt aus externen Datenquellen hier vom Deutschen Wetterdienst eingebunden worden sind. Hier geht es um die, um die Wetterdaten. Uh, this is about uh, weather data and the dann auch data is einbinden. Um, integratable into the framework half automatic. For example, um, warming stripes are possible and you can configure it um, in a flexible way. And in theory, um, you can have more widgets here that are specific uh, Overall, it was important just that the cities are comparable, that the display of cities is comparable. 
ähm, sich gesetzt hat, vergleichen. You can compare the goals of Münster with uh, das war der data. Blick aus der Sicht einer interessierten Person. This was from the view Wie sieht of das aus? a dedicated person. Jetzt als Verwaltungsmitarbeitende Person. Uh, how does it look das if you're will, an um, muss ich mir nur einen Account anlegen, organizational member? Verschiedene Regionen zu you can get an account and have possibilities to link uh, multiple regions. For example, you can uh, link the region of Cologne. What you see is what you get, Manier. Um, relativ einfach. You have uh, what you see is what you get. Uh, interface. You can add and delete um, measures or update them. And you can. Um, have widgets for weather data or for um, communal elections and configure them easily by uh, selecting your data source here. It was important to us that we will not uh, go into concurrence to other existing uh, solutions. Many communes have very good web presences and web portals, and therefore it is possible to um, use uh, single widgets here uh, from external websites by selecting a widget here and uh, getting the code to Einzubinden. Uh, added into a design of your own. Offenes, um, auch open source, also the project understands itself as an open source and flexible uh, framework for, uh, so that not each city has to build their own technical solution and start building their own uh, climate portals and develop them. Und genau diese Arbeit, and therefore, uh, exactly this work uh, shouldn't be done in parallel. And that's why we wanted to uh, do this with this project, uh, Local Emissions Framework, once centralized and offered to communes and cities. On such a project where it's a lot about data collection and data um, presentation, there are a lot of questions which we are discussing and are ongoing uh, and that we keep discussing. Then, of course, we have the question, where are the data coming from? And uh, do we need support to interpret the uh, data? And how far do you want to be active yourself and participate? Um, does the commune or city already have um, measures that are enough or uh, will you can let the data speak for itself and we want to give uh, people the possibility to Uh, view uh, data easily. We want uh, citizens to make their own uh, thoughts and conclusions. And the question about how can we um, that uh, communes or cities participate in this. Uh, what are the next steps? We are happy if more people talk about the LEF or um, be it organization members or citizens. Also the contact to communes and cities um, and weil da this genau is important dann, uh, ja, because that's where the data sehr, sehr gut, um, is usually already uh, collected in a good way. Besten, um, and we ask ourselves, how can we um, best integrate them through interfaces into the LEF? Um, 
But of course, there's a lot of coding to do for LEF. LEF needs a lot of uh, love. And we are happy about um, contributions. And the LEF wants to stay a place where people can um, help us with their abilities. And we are happy about each person that contributes to um, our project. Um, that was it for the local emissions feedback uh, framework. We are happy uh, about feedback and we are thanking you for your attention. So, dann begrüße ich jetzt von den Sprechern den Frederik. For now I welcome from the speakers uh, Philip. Hello. Und die erste Frage. Exactly. And the first question that was asked is, do you know examples where the um, connection to civil society was well implemented already? Um, well, as far as I understand the question, it is about uh, whether, there are other, whether there are other projects following the same route as we've seen earlier, there are related projects uh, that pursue the same targets to make data more accessible. Funktioniert das auch, äh, auch sehr and gut. Wir, it works very well. Sehen uns auch da, äh, sehr als, als and wir we Projekten. again um, see us also in the role of an interface um, between the various ja, projects because the data that is to be put into LEF has been uh, collected in these other projects as well. Und da kann man, ich, einfach sehr, sehr gut and we can work together very well in that regard. And uh, the LEF can then more focus on the visual presentation and simplification. Uh, maybe we have a kind of a journalist role here uh, to get people that haven't been so deeply in the, in the issue to get them involved and, and get the issue to them. Zum Beispiel fragt den Staat, haben wir ja auch schon gesehen, dass es da zum Teil von Verwaltungsseite auch, sage ich mal, Abwehrhandlungen gibt. With projects like Frag den Staat, we have seen that on the organizational side, you have... Um, was bekannt oder sind da alle total motiviert oder wisst ihr noch nicht so gut? Um, some negative uh, stance with the project, did that happen to you or did you have other experiences? Um, well, until now, uh, the communes uh, that we work with were very interested and we have seen that it uh, meets the need because they um, already started recognizing the problem and uh, you, you could see that in the long PDFs and we can um, we can get to an easy display there that is accessible to everyone and there's a lot of interest for that. I can imagine there are some defensive stances uh, when it's going on to the direction of uh, the city XY does too little. Um, and we try to um, not be the place for asking the question of where there's uh, more or less have to be done. And we want to um, offer the information part and there is little need uh, or reason for fear on the sides of communes because it's just a better display of uh, things that are already being done, uh, showing them and making them more visible. And it is in the interest of uh, communes and uh, cities to be in contact with the citizens and uh, well, then we hope that it will stay that way. I have an anecdote I could add here. And a few years ago, there was a project when people visualize data from households and uh, 
Aber da war uh, from the budgets, the local budgets, and that was local, uh, that was public data too, of course, city budget, and it was hard to get cities to get convince cities to publish their data in that way. And from my <coughs> community, there is this uh, citizens' budget that they can vote on. They can decide whether side road A or side road B should be um, renovated, and that, of course, down to proposals from the administration. So. Of course, you have to uh, look at it, and we had rather a feeling of um, it being a part of the organization of the LEF. We had a certain flexibility in which data uh, being shown when uh, communes have data and we can show them in a um, way where you can compare them. And it's not very useful to uh, force communes to um, send us incomplete data. We uh, try to offer them lots of flexibility and um, so that communes can use it as a communication tool uh, for themselves. And the dialogue and the long time goal of the LEF is, of course, uh, for example, lots of communes have events where you can um, bring people together for um, talking about what has to be changed in uh, traffic or. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds very interesting. And I hope that you'll have a very good result with that. And uh, we have run out of questions as well. So the only thing that remains for me is to say thank you and wish you a good success. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for listening to the translation for this talk. Uh, on this channel, uh, the next talk will be at 10.30 in just over 30 minutes time. And the talk will be uh, the digger occupation, trigger occupation and hashtags against capitalism. Bis dann. See you then. Genau. And uh, don't uh, set any diggers on fire until then and we'll see you. Yes, and uh, thanks for listening to the interpretation. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can give us feedback using the hashtag C3Lingo on Twitter and Mastodon. And uh, we hope that you will spread the news that you have English uh, language interpretation here uh, for the many German talks. Uh, your interpreters were Sebalis and Ku. We'll see you soon.